Now, I'm going to show you a few different ways to find this uh, because there, there are sort of different cases for it. Okay? So just as an example, let's imagine there are seven people in your group, in your population or your sample or whatever it is, and you want to work out what are all the quartiles in this set of data. Okay? Now, it would be really helpful if you have a couple of colours handy. The first thing you do is you find the median. Right? That's the easiest to find, and we already know how to find that. So that's a good starting point. Okay? Can someone remind me, how do I find the median in a normal set of scores? I've got two ways, if you remember. Okay, number one, I can just sort of um, climb from the bottom and from the top, and eventually I will meet in the middle. Okay, does that make sense? What was my other way of doing it, my quicker way? Um, N plus 1 over 2. Yeah, very good. So I've conveniently named the scores after how many there are. So if N 7, I'm going to add 1, which gets me to 8, and then I divide by 2, which gets me to 4. Okay, so let's all label this guy in here, right? We already know that's Q2, the median. Okay. Now, with your other colours there, I want you to notice. Have a look at the rest of the data. You've got the same number of scores below the median as you do above the median, right? So what you've got now, I want you to imagine, it's like, oh, I've got a whole new set of scores over here, and this little set of scores has its own median. Does that make sense? So you have a look at these three, and I mean, because you've only got three, what's the median in this little corner of the world? It's two, it's two right? So this guy here is going to be the first quartile. And you rehearse it again for your upper set of data, and you're like, oh, six is in the middle. So that's your upper quartile. So this is the lower one, and this is the upper one. Now, to know whether you got it right or not, all you have to do is come back to what a quartile is. Just remember the definition and see if it was successful. Have a look. Have we divided up the data into four equal sections? Have we done it? Yeah, we have, right? <coughs> look, here's the data below Q1. Here's the data <coughs> between Q1 and Q2, the one between Q3 and Q4, and here's what's above it. Does that make sense? So this is not challenging, but this is nice and neat. This is where everything lands particularly neatly on numbers. So write another example for me underneath this. Let's just add a score. Um, also, before we start doing this, we found the quartiles, but I haven't actually calculated the interquartile range, have I? What, what's the last step that's missing? It's the easiest step, actually. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just take the difference, right? So maybe on the right-hand side here, you want to actually calculate the interquartile range is the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. You don't have to keep on writing those. We can use the abbreviation, upper take away lower. In this case, you can see I've circled them in black, so it's 6 take away 2, and that gives you the actual interquartile range. Okay. Now, by the way, can you notice, right? See how I've got... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could have made this guy over here, this seven, I could have made it like a hundred, right? Make it a huge outlier. The range will change, but the interquartile range will stay the same. So it's kind of like trying to avoid this, uh, this problem here. You're like, oh, you got an outlier, no big deal. The interquartile range is cool, all right? All right, let's have a look at this one. Uh, again, let's go through this and try and work out each of the individual pieces, right? Firstly, but where do we start? Which quartile do we find first? Q2. Q2, because the middle one's always the easiest to spot. So you have a look. Um, again, can we do it the quick way? Let's like try and practice it. How many terms are there? Eight. Eight. So you add one, which gets you to nine. Nine, nine divided by two is? Four and a half. So that means here's the fourth and fifth terms, right? So I'm going to say, I used red, didn't I? I'm going to say right in here, right, four, four and a half. That's the median, Q2. And then, what did I do from here to get to the rest of the quartiles? Do you remember? Find the median of the other two sections. Yeah, very good. I, try, I remembered, I imagined. Hey, look, I have separated, using the median, the data into two different chunks. And I'm going to treat them, one chunk, two chunks, I'm going to treat each of them as kind of its, its own population, right? Okay, so what's the median down here? Uh, 
Okay, okay so it's between 2 and 3, so it's 2.5. So that is Q1, and I'm going to rehearse the same thing over here. 6.5, that's Q3. Okay, so you can see sometimes the numbers, all of your quartiles will land on some of the scores, just like the median did. Sometimes it doesn't, it lands all between. Now, we did it for seven scores, we did it for eight scores. I'd like you, without me holding your hand, could you do it for nine scores and for ten scores as well? Just do that as example three and example four. I want you to see if you can do it on your own, Steve, and then we'll share our results in a minute. Okay, have a go. Okay, can someone walk me through? Let's do the third one with nine scores instead of seven or eight. What are we going to go to first? Where are we looking? Five. We're going to go right to the middle. Okay, so Q2 is the easiest to spot, so I'm going to highlight that guy. Okay, now what's the thought process I go through to find out what the other two quartiles are? What do I do? Yeah, good. And by the way, can I just um, emphasize, like, you see how I underline these in black, right? It's important that you work out what are you finding the median of? For example, having a look at this one, it was, it was obvious on this one. Having a look at this one, it matters whether you say this is where you're finding the median or whether you include the five or not, okay? Do you include the five or do you leave it aside and just say, well, there are four scores? Just think about that for a second before I answer that question. How would you be able to tell whether you include the five or not? Keep that, keep that thought in your head. Let's, let's find what they are under this scheme. What's the, um, what do you reckon Q1 is in this case? Two and a half. And Q3? Okay, cool. Okay, now how am I going to work out whether I did this right or not? Apart from, of course, looking at the back of the book or relying on a teacher to tell you. What do you think, Laura? Um, like you have the same amount of numbers in each like, quarter. Yeah, fantastic. So I want to look at each of these spots, each of these dividers, and see were they successful in making sure that there's equal, um, equal numbers between each of them. And it works, doesn't it? Look, you've got two scores here underneath, two scores in between two and three, two scores between... Okay, so you get the idea. Right? Now can you imagine, don't, don't write this because it's going to be wrong, imagine if I'd included the 5. What does that mean? Never mind. Uh, if you'd included the 5, like this, okay, we already know, okay, this guy is done, so here's Q2. If I included the 5, which score is which? Which, is, which score is Q1 and which one is Q3? What's Q1 on this, on this scheme of doing it? It's going to be the 3. Right? And which one is Q3? If I include the 5 again, it's going to be the 7, right? But do you see the problem? Do you see what's emerged? Right? Look, I'll, again, I'll do the count. Okay? I will look to the left of Q1, and how many scores do I see? I see 1 and 2. Then I look between Q1 and Q2, and how many scores do I see? Between the quartiles, there's only one score, right? It's just the four. Do you see that? Right? And then again, there's only one score here, and you've got two scores over there. So it's symmetrical, but they're not quartiles. You haven't divided up into four equal sections. Okay? So that's how you know. Like I always like I struggle to remember, and I actually, when I learned them, I just learned it as a random rule that you don't include Q2 because because the textbook told me not to include Q2. But this is the reason why. Like you've got to make sure they are actually quartiles and there's four equal sections. Okay, do you want to maybe skip and just tell me which ones Q1, Q2, and Q3 are for this last set? Um, 5.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yep. Three. Three. That's nice and easy because you can see there's an odd number of there. And Eight. fantastic. Okay, so you're getting the hang of it. These four examples, they're all the ones you need to do because if you do the next one, have a look. Do you see there's a pattern? Do you see there's a pattern? This first one, the quartiles all land on scores. Two, four, six. Yeah? Have a look at this one. Where do the quartiles land? In between. Always in between. They're all, they're all halves. Have a look at this one. You've got the middle one on a score and then outside of scores. Then here, you've got in between scores and on scores. Your next one, what's going to happen to it? Which one of these will it be if you've got 11 scores? 
all of them are going to land. You're going to be back in this situation. Do you see? Uh, and one of the ways you know is from seven scores to 11 scores, right? You've added on four scores, right? So it's just like slotting in. See how I've got one, two, three, four, one in each quartile? Well, you're just going to add one extra one to each quartile. And that's it. Okay? So these four are all the different kinds of ways you've got quartiles. Just draw them out. Um, there are formulas that you can work out, like you know how we did n plus one on two? There's other ones which go like n two n plus three on four. It gets a bit confusing and people get them wrong. So I think um, writing the scores out is much simpler. Okay? Does anyone have any questions? Is this how it goes in the box and whisker plots? Yes, yes. So we're going to look at box and whisker plots. Uh, we're going to be drawing a lot of them tomorrow. And um, I have also forgotten <laughs> to actually calculate the interquartile range for each one. Can you just quickly tell me what's the range here? Four. Okay, from there to there. There's four here. Five. five, it's spaced out. And here, five. also five. Okay, good. So the box and whisker plot is going to take your bottom <laughs> score. So it'll put a line there. It takes each of these quartiles and puts a box around them and then takes your higher score like this and that's what makes your whiskers. But we're going to spend a bit more time on that tomorrow. Okay? And that, that's all it is to a box of whiskers. Um, oh, by the way, like these, these three things here, they're also called these five numbers. They're called the five number summary or the five point summary of a set of scores. So you'll hear that phrase sometimes, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay?